I understand that you might be wary of constant tech updates, but this new ChatGPT update is something that you need to be paying attention to. It is not just hype. It is something that will save you time and money in your business, and I'm going to show you exactly how. So first, let's understand what exactly just dropped from OpenAI for ChatGPT. This update specifically allows you to interact with ChatGPT in three specific ways. So one, you have text, which we've had for a while now, and that's what everyone knows and loves. But now we have voice and images. Voice just dropped on iOS and Android apps for ChatGPT Plus users. Uh, I'll tell you how to set that up in just a little bit. Voice specifically allows you to interact with your chatbot with just your voice and engage in a back and forth conversation using just natural language, which is really great for a lot of reasons, which, which we'll get into in here just a second. But you use it just like you would use Siri or Amazon's or Google's offerings for their voice assistants as well. Uh, I envision this specifically for businesses being used for frontline workers uh, in, in the service industry, any situation where your hands are full and you're constantly on the move, it's very nice to just be able to pull things up. I've even seen some instances where they've tied the new action button on the iPhone 15 to trigger a voice conversation with ChatGPT, which means that you can say in your AirPods, Siri, voice with ChatGPT, and it will open up a chat with your voice assistant. So a few reasons come to mind for why voice can be helpful uh, in businesses. First and foremost, you might know this, that a lot of your employees are not great typers. It's just a fact that not everyone's super fast on a keyboard, be it at a computer or a laptop or even texting on your smartphone. It's cumbersome, it takes a while for some people and that just makes it not a very good option to interact with to get quick information out of. As the tech world continues to advance quickly with AI, it's leaving behind a large group of people that aren't used to interacting with technology in this fashion or typing to a chatbot or chatting with a chatbot for hours on end, trying to solve some complex issue. Assistant is the answer for a large majority of the population who's going to be a whole lot more used to talking through issues than typing them out to a chatbot. Especially with how complex it can be to prompt ChatGPT to get the answers that you want, it's not natural language. You're literally training a bot to answer in a specific way that you tell it to. In my experience with voice, we don't have that issue at all. That issue just completely disappears. With ChatGPT voice, I can ramble a little bit. I can do some ums and some ahs as I'm talking. I can interrupt my own sentences and thoughts and ChatGPT understands what I'm trying to convey and answers appropriately in a really, really appealing voice. Uh, all five different voice options for ChatGPT sound amazing. They sound like an actual person. So it's actually like you're getting answers from a friend. While I was testing this, I was walking my dog and I pulled up ChatGPT voice and I asked, hey, I'm walking my dog right now and he's pulling a little hard on the leash. What are some tips to correct this behavior? My voice assistant responded quickly with some super easy tips to like implement right as I was walking the dog, but also some long-term training tips as well, along with some questions about uh, the dog's breed and what exactly was happening to try to further help the scenario. But I decided to ask it a specific question about what brand of harness would be best to walk my dog and train my dog with. It went on and added some different harness brands that I could go and buy and listed the benefits of each of those brands. The whole conversation with my voice assistant lasted around 30 seconds and it was super helpful and something that I can take back and reference too because on my computer later, I did notice that it showed up in my chat GPT history as well. So if we're looking at implementing GPT voice specifically into our business, keep in mind that not all of your employees are great typers and that voice might be a better 
option for them and keep in mind what their specific job role is as voice will be super helpful for some and might be interruptive in like an office environment. If you'd like to get started with voice features, you can start right now as it's out for most ChatGPT Plus users and it's super straightforward. If you are a ChatGPT Plus subscriber, then you can head to settings, then new features on the mobile app and then opt into voice conversations. Once you're done, tap the headphone button located in the top right corner of your home screen where you can then select a preferred voice from five different options available. Like I said, those five options are all very good. Personally, I'm using Sky as she just seemed kind of friendly and helpful. Hello. I'm really excited about teaming up with you and I'm also So to that's the one that I chose, a little more positive. Uh, than the others in my opinion, but I chose Sky. Let me know down in the comments below what voice assistant you ended up choosing. I'm curious to see why you chose them and, and who all chose who. So image input is the next new ChatGPT plus feature. And this is the one that I see that most businesses will get the most use out of quickly and easily. With this feature, you can show ChatGPT any picture on your phone or computer, and you can even in the app draw a specific location on the, on the picture that you want ChatGPT to focus in on and describe what you want done and what your question is with that picture. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this, I am one of the ChatGPT Plus subscribers that does not have the image feature yet. So I'm basing what will work and what I plan to do for this for myself and my clients based on what I've seen other people working on. More specifically, I've come up with three effective ways that I plan on implementing this into my own business and that I'm already in discussions with some of my current clients about how we can implement this feature into their workflow. So first off, this one's really popular among my clients and it's turning process flows into documentation. We've all had meetings with our coworkers where we are deep in the weeds mapping out a new process be it how we are onboarding new hires, how purchase orders are handled, maybe a new sales process, shipping logistics, whatever. We end the meeting with this giant, beautiful flowchart up on our whiteboard or on a digital canvas on our computer of this process workflow that we're trying to implement within our business. Now, no one ever takes that process flow that's on the whiteboard or in, in your digital canvas and then writes it down into your company's documentation. With ChatGPT images, I recommend that you start taking a picture or a screenshot of these process flows, then ask ChatGPT to write thorough documentation based on what it can see in the picture. To make it even better, I've crafted a brand new prompt for you to use with these images, and I've linked it down below in the description. And in this prompt, we're telling ChatGPT to document the process involved in this picture, thoroughly examine each step and document what is happening in the process in a clear and concise manner in the documentation section of your response. After you are finished, start a question section and ask up to five questions for me to answer. We will continue this iterative process with me providing additional information to you and you updating the documentation in the documentation section until I say we are done. So what this does is that you're going to take a picture of your process flow, prompt ChatGPT with that prompt, and then you're going to answer questions that ChatGPT has because maybe it doesn't have the whole picture of what this process flow is and it has just a few questions for you to answer. And then it's going to keep every time you answer keep getting your documentation on that process flow better and better. You can bring that documentation back, put it wherever you store all your documentation at, and now you have a not only a beautiful flow chart on your whiteboard, but you also have a written documentation of what that even means. A last tip for your documentation is that many people are also taking their documentation and then hooking up an AI chatbot that's only trained on the documentation at hand. So you might be wondering, well, why is that useful, Evan? I can't ask it questions about how to make ramen noodles or whatever you ask ChatGPT. I can only ask it about our onboarding process or whatever. And that's precisely it. We can now give this to new hires and let them ask questions against our current documentation. So your documentation is being written by AI, but also your AI is training your new employees for you without you always having to have a person training them they can quickly ask the chatbot a question 
it responds and if it doesn't know, it'll just respond that it doesn't know and to ask whoever's training them. So that brings us right into number two, the second best way that I've seen to use ChatGPT images, and that is to create promotional content. Now, showcasing the work that you and your small business does is a lot of fun. Showing the recent deck you just built or a new landscape that you just made for your client is amazing. But writing down a description of what you did, why you did it, and how you did it that is engaging for people on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you're posting your social media content or your promotional content, your website is really boring. So what you can do is take a before picture of whatever you're working on for a client and then take an after picture and then ask ChatGPT to compare the before picture, compare it to the after picture. And with that, draft a description of what changed why it changed and how it changed and make it engaging for social media content. These are also great to generate case studies on your website based on previous client work. So just take your before and your after pictures and have it do the work for you. Now last, but personally, definitely not least, is using the ChatGPT images for tech support visual assistance. For all of us that have been on the help desk or work tech support, or maybe you're just the tech support person for your family, this is going to be a lifesaver. And I recommend going about this in two ways and starting with number one, and that is have the person having the tech issue, obviously take a picture of what tech issue they're having, what their screen is currently showing, but then put that into chat GPT and ask them to troubleshoot what is going on with their computer. Then instruct your grandparents or whoever you're talking to, an end user, whoever, instruct them to chat with ChatGPT as if the bot was tech support. I estimate that this will probably only work about 50% of the time because there's a lot of different niche scenarios. And also the end user or your grandparents might not even know what to take a picture of, which is kind of a problem. So that leads me to the second option, which is they call you and you instruct them on where and what to take a picture of and then provide that to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to describe what's on the screen and what is going on to a live computer technician in a way that a computer technician would understand. This can give the tech invaluable insight into what is going on and then they can further help you get through that scenario. In light of these exciting updates from ChatGPT, it's evident that technology is not just advancing, but it's becoming more inclusive and accessible, catering to various user needs and preferences. These features, particularly the voice, but also the Im image input, can be seamlessly integrated into daily operations for most businesses, making tasks simpler and more efficient. If you're curious about how these technological advancements can be smoothly integrated into your business in a way that's sustainable sustainable, but also substantial for your business. Take a look down in the comment section below as I put a bunch of different content down there that will be useful for you. Now, I understand that AI is new and it is scary, but all of my clients that I've worked with in implementing new AI features and they're skeptical in the beginning, they are all loving it and working with it every single day or most days now. So uh, I'd love to hear if you have any certain ways that you're using these new chat GPT features. Uh, you can leave those just down in the comments, but that's all I have for you guys today. Let's keep building things that are useful for you and your business. Until next time, bye.